Now let's walk through the functions of the Camino monitor. So there's five tabs across the top. It's completely menu driven. So the main tab is when you'll find you'll spend the majority of your time. And you can see that there's a four second pulse wave screen here. This is where you'll be able to see compliance of the brain by watching your P1, P2, and P3. Up in the top right corner is where your ICP value is displayed in millimeters of mercury. If you're using a Camino catheter that allows for temperature monitoring, then that will show below in this temperature area. If you do not use a catheter that allows for temperature, you will see two dashes and that will be normal. Right now, my scale is set at negative 10 to 20. So if my patient's ICP is within that range, then that's exactly the scale that I want to be at. I'm gonna attach a catheter here so we can see what that looks like. It's telling you the catheter's initializing. And here's my ICP value showing up at four. But if my patient's ICP was much higher than that, I would need to change my scale in order to do that, I'm gonna use the scale button down in the bottom left-hand corner. If I touch it one time, it goes to zero to 30. If I touch it again, zero to 50. Again, zero to 100. And then lastly, zero to 150. And it cycles back around when I touch it one more time to negative 10 to 20. So that's how you optimize your scale. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a gray message bar Anytime the monitor wants to tell you something about itself, the catheter, or the patient, it will pop up with a message down here in this bar. If it's a message that you need to intervene on, something that's important for the patient, then it will flash bright yellow, and it will also sound an audible tone, so you'll know that you need to go and address something with the monitor or the patient. The trend tab is where we're able to go back and look at ICP over time. So on this tab, we can go back and look at ICP value as a bar graph at three hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, or up to five days worth of data. And in order to change that scale, we simply touch where it says time scale, and we're able to look at our trend data. The next tab over is alarm. In the alarm screen, we're actually able to change what our alarm value is, and it's our high limit alert alarm. So right now, our alarm is set at 20. If I want to change that to 22, I'll hit the arrow up button to 22, and then I just need to accept that value. And it takes me back to the main screen, and I have a bell here that's telling me my alarm is on, and it's set at 22. I can also go under my alarm screen, and I can turn my alarms off. And to do that, I simply touch the button that says alarm off. Again, I need to hit accept. My bell goes away on my main screen. And now I have a message down here in yellow telling me that my ICP alarms are off. But I wanna turn them back on. So I'm gonna go back under alarms. And I just wanna restore the default. The default setting is currently at 20 millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to touch restore default hit accept, and now my ICP alarm is set back at 20. Now let me show you what would happen if my ICP was higher than 20. So I'm going to adjust my ICP value here, and as it climbs, you'll begin to see down here in the bottom left-hand corner that this bell is gonna flash bright yellow, and you'll hear an audible tone. To pause the alarm, I touch the yellow button and it pauses it for three minutes. The next tab over is my settings tab. This is where I can set my time, date, language. I can also change what my waveform looks like. So my waveform can either look like a single line or it can look like it's filled in. So if I go back to my main screen, you can see that it looks like a block. This would be fill. If I go into settings and I choose line and I hit accept, it now looks like a single line on the screen. And that's just visually what you prefer to look at.